Hi ladies, my name is Lori and I will never diet again. I'm a conservative Christian, a wife, mother, grandmother, pastor's wife, and my family and I have lived in Mexico since 2004. I'm so glad you've come to join me today. Welcome to my kitchen. Good evening. If you're tuning in for the first time, this week my son challenged me to intermittent fast until four o'clock, four o'clock each day. And we are giving ourselves a two hour window to eat. So it's basically one meal a day is what it, it adds up to because it's hard to get everything in in just two hours, but it's fun. And I hope you enjoy watching what transpires this week. I have my hot water to go. Out getting my vitamin D. It's a little breezy, so I'm hoping it won't catch into the microphone too much. I think it's about noon. But last evening, I was I went to bed around 10, and... I had kind of a headache and I'm sure it's from having a coffee withdrawal because I'm not going to drink coffee at four o'clock. I'm glad that part is over. It wasn't too bad. My dog is trying to chase the shadow so she's pulling on me. I have a standard poodle to help me from falling in the street with vertigo. It's just about big enough to put a harness on her but I don't want to pull on her too much until she's older, like about two is when they technically say they're ready. Listening to a video by Dr. Lyle, you could probably look it up if you're interested. I think, I think Chef AJ did it a while back, uh, but it talks about, he talks about fasting and there's some really good information on there. There's three tips for success when you're gonna go home from having done one of their programs. And then he, then he talks about uh, chronic fatigue, which I, I struggle with so, so much. Happy Valentine's Day. What a day to be fasting until four on Valentine's Day. Well, it, it'll pay off in the end. I'm sure it will. There's a couple of things that I've noticed Originally, when I dry fasted until four, it was called nothing until four. I did this back in uh, 2019, and it was before I went on the McDougal program, and I was eating raw. Now, something about eating raw was that one of the doctors, I can't remember which lecture I was lis listening to, they were explaining that when you eat the non-starchy vegetables, the greens, they have they're packed full of protein and they actually give us energy. And so the, the, the starches like potatoes, they can make you more drowsy. So this makes so much sense because when I was doing raw until, and then not, eating nothing until four and then four o'clock was normally my slump time of the day when I had to go take a nap, I had tons of energy. I felt like the energ Energizer Bunny. And it was because I was eating these huge salads. And so that was energy. Now, they were making a point that if you eat a salad, or like the other day, a couple of weeks ago, I had celery. I, I wanted a quick snack, and then I wanted celery, and then I couldn't fall asleep. It's because the celery gave me energy, whereas if I would have had something more starchy, like a potato wedge, I probably would have gone to sleep. It made so much sense to me. I was like, oh, that's cool to put that connection together. So try to eat your, your non-starchy veggies, your protein veggies, your raw veggies during the day when you want to be more active. And then in the evening when you want to go to bed, eat your, your starches so that you'll be sleepy and ready to get a good night's rest. Well, we need to do that if we're having trouble sleeping. I was listening to Dr. Lyle. What he mentioned was that when we sleep, the body produces a hormone 
that kind of does a clean sweep. It cleanses our brain. <laughs> and when we don't get enough sleep, we wake up with a dirty brain, with a dirty mind. That's the tired feeling that we feel. And when that happens over a long period of time, then you end up with chronic fatigue. Now, he said a lot of us will use coffee to wake back up. So we're suppressing the, de the need and the desire to sleep properly. And if we can't fall asleep at night because we haven't uh, exercised enough or done enough strenuous hard labor, you just find yourself in this horrible cycle. And he said then the nerves get effect affected because the nerves, the nerves are telling you to, that they want to sleep, but your brain has had coffee and it says it doesn't want to sleep and the nerves then won't let, give you the energy to exercise. Isn't that wild? So you're wanting to exercise, but you don't feel like exercising. So you're just chronically fatigued. I think that that's just crazy because I might lay in bed and at 11 o'clock, my nerves are jumping all over the place. So I can't sleep. I'm sure coffee makes that worse. And I did sleep a lot better last night, I think. I didn't have to apply any of the mint cream to calm things down. I just slept. So I think I, I, think I do feel better today. So how can I get off of this uh, roller coaster? I guess I have to make myself exercise, even when my nerves are telling me that I'm too tired to exercise because it wants to sleep. Stay off of the caffeine so that I'm not awake when I need to go to sleep and it's not aggravating my nerves to want to then stay awake later at night, I guess, because they seem to wake up at 11 o'clock and I need to continue to try to go to bed earlier. Like when the first, when I get that first round of I'm sleeping, I need to go to bed, which is pretty much after the sun goes down, I'm like, oh, I'm to the point now of retraining myself where I, I'm like, okay, I want to clean up. I want to go take my hot bath. I want to go lay in bed and I just want to be quiet. So that's a good thing. That's my update on the chronic fatigue. As far as the intermittent fasting goes, I just think it's funny that we chose to do this on Valentine's Day. This week is just, and yesterday there was a huge group that went out to eat after church and I just, I just had water. I had mineral water and then I, by the time everybody was served and eating, it was 3.30 and I asked if I could be dismissed so that I could go to the store and then go home and make my, my food to eat. I did weigh myself this morning and it didn't go down as much as I thought it might, only because when I did this uh, nothing until four, before I was dropping like two pounds a day, but I was a lot heavier. But yesterday, in my soup, I added two tablespoons of the liquid amino acids, and that is high in sodium. So tomorrow is not my normal, regular weigh-in, so I am going to cut back my salt intake to just the three quarters of a teaspoon today. I'm going to make sure that any of the water retention is, um, is gone. I like to drink dandelion tea, and I didn't drink that yesterday, so I need to drink a herbal mixed tea today after uh, after four o'clock of course and go to bed earlier i did my 30 minute walk and i'm kind of anxious to see what the scale will say tomorrow I feel like i bought way too much stuff at the store today i was glad we had to make a costco run and they had brussels sprouts i know a lot of people like brussels sprouts and i haven't liked them yet so i i'm determined well you know what i do like them in when they're sliced super thin, raw in a salad. I do like that. So today I'm going to be trying Brussels sprouts by boiling them first. I'm gonna see how they are cooked through by boiling them and then adding, I don't know what I'm gonna add because I was thinking I'd add liquid aminos to it, but maybe I'll just do a little dab just to taste one because I'm kind of anxious to try them. What's your favorite way of eating Brussels sprouts, if you happen to eat them. 
I made potato nuggets for my husband, and here's my Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes. They cooked up real nice. I'll include the recipe in the description. I added a quarter cup of oats. I added a tablespoon of my seeds from seed cycling. I added my salad dressing that I love so much, and it was pretty good. Here I ate a full bowl, and then I had another half a bowl. That was all of it. I ate five of the potato nuggets, and then I am just showing you how I cut these potato nuggets to freeze. And I had my little cappuccino and my brownie cake. It's just after six. It feels like it's been a long day already. I've been in the kitchen. I'm ready to go back to, to the house, walk one more time, because uh, Missy here has a lot of energy. <laughs> so, which is good. It keep, makes me move. I made Brussels sprouts. Actually, it was really good. If I did something different with the Brussels sprouts, I would not cook them as long, for one. And I put my, sal my mouth-watering salad dressing <laughs> on it, and I would, so I'd use less water, and I think it would give it a bigger punch of flavor. It was good. And, and I, did I say I had five nuggets? And then I made a little brownie cake. I just had a little sliver, and because it's a treat, today is a special day. I had a um, decaf fake cappuccino. Somebody's coming. I made the little brownie cake, and my husband likes it. So I can leave you the recipe in the description box. I keep trying to de-stress and um, do what I'm supposed to be doing and it will pay off in the end. The loss from the first day was nine and three fifths ounces. I lost over half of a pound, which isn't bad. Going down is always good, right? It wasn't two pounds like it was, you know, a couple of years ago when I was heavier, but it's great. <laughs> Like and subscribe, please.